sir. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Every year, there are restrictions and there is privilege. May this session be a privilege for all of us. In order for new things to come, old things must go. If you want freedom, restrictions must go. If you want health, sickness must go. If you want to continue to move on in this life, stagnation must go. Along this way, there is a key element that I would like to share with you in today's session. This first key element is observation. Observation doesn't include thinking. Observation does not involve in comparison and therefore it is free from judgment. You are not adding any information to your experience and you are also not subtracting any type of information of this experience. Observation is about how things are, not how they should be and not how it could be. Just imagine yourself being the captain of a ship. There are people that trust in you. These are people you are responsible for. If you do not possess the ability and the skill to properly observe the signs of the ocean, it will become very, very difficult to choose the proper direction and to navigate. Regardless of where you want to go, learning to observe, observing yourself is the first step along this way. Now, it is almost exactly one year ago, it was January 2020, when I had a short sharing in the topic of the five hindrances. In this example, I was talking about mental states that are making it very difficult to attain something that we regard as clarity. Now clarity on the one side and the ability of, to observe on the other side, they are very, very close related to each other. Now, if you look at your life or just take your profession that you are having right now. There is a story behind it. There is a past behind it, how you got to this point. So what we are relating this structure to is something we call karma. Nothing happens without a cause. Things that are manifesting today are the consequences of your past actions. Your health on the one side, your physical health and your mental health is going to be in the future, the result of all the actions that you are putting into practice from this moment on. About two years ago, I started to publicly 
offer all the free courses that you find on the Xiong Yi online. And the reason why until today, I did not start any online session was because I wanted to give you something in your hands and to also see for yourself how much commitment and how much determination you are able to put in your own life, even if there's no teacher or no instructor around you who is watching over your practices on a daily or weekly basis. But I would suggest right now, since we have this opportunity to just follow me now along some physical exercises and the main point is try to observe what is going on inside of you. Do not add anything, do not take anything away. Let's move on to the practice. Start with the feet together and place both of your palms in front of your chest. Bow. Lift the elbows and start to breathe in deeply. Sink your weight on the right leg. Or with your balance, left leg, step out. Open the chest and slowly inhale. 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 Exhale. Inhale and open the chest. Exhale. Inhale. During the inhalation,
pay attention to the expansion of your chest. Continue breathing, inhale. Exhale. And two more times. Inhale. One more time. Exhale. Place your hands in front of the lower abdomen and place your attention purely on your breath. Inhale and feel the expansion inside of your chest. Exhale. Inhale as much as you can. And slowly exhale, release all the air. Inhale, expand. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Now, the large breathing, you are integrating a larger movement together with the breathing. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Inhale. Exhale. Try to synchronize the movement with your breathing. Three more times. Inhale. One more time. Inhale. Now, clench both of your fists. So squeeze the fists really strong and keep the fists closed. Yeah, 
Keep the fist closed during the next exercise. Once again, squeeze the fist and start. Jump. Just jump very softly. Keep the fists closed. Tense the fists. Continue. Uh, continue jumping. Continue, continue. While you are jumping, keep the fists still closed and watch that your inhalation and exhalation remains calm. Yeah. Now, from here, inhale. Open the fist. Inhale, squeeze. Exhale. Inhale, squeeze. Inhale. Inhale. Three more times. In. Two. One. So by this time, if you now feel inside yourself, if you did it correct, you should feel some heat arising right now. So if you look behind me, it's just started to snow a few days ago. And so we are having minus six degrees at the moment. Therefore, let's continue some practice. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. In. One more time. Inhale.
and push the palms above your head. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. In. Up. In. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. In. Out. Take the left step out. In. Out. In. Inhale on the way up. And exhale. Inhale. Inhale. And exhale. Continue the exercise. Inhale. And exhale. Two more times, inhale. And when you release, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Continue, inhale, and exhale. And one more time, inhale. And exhale. Now let's include in the next exercise our legs a little bit. Clench the fist. And inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. In. And out.
inhale and exhale inhale and exhale in look from the side in 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 let's continue four more times in 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 One more time, in, now from here, inhale, exhale, Inhale. Inhale. Push the palms to the front. Inhale, return back up. Sideways. In.
inhale. So in this next exercise, I'll show you up front here. You inhale and lift your arm at the same time like this. Inhale. Now first we exhale. Again. Inhale first. Then first exhale until all your air is out. When there's no air left anymore, shake your arm out. Imagine when your hand is very wet and so you're shaking it, you're shaking it out. But all of this synchronized by using also your breath and the movement. So from here, inhale. Breathe out first. Until all the air is out. And now, so left arm 16 times, right arm also 16 times and start slow so you don't hurt your joints. Come here. Two. Six. Seven. And eight. And same with the right hand. Inhale. Exhale first. In. Exhale. Three. Four. 
four. Six. Seven. And last time. The same to the front. Inhale. Exhale. In. In. And four more times, inhale. Last time. So So I think you can take your time right now just sit a moment put your back straight straighten it and just focus on the breathing Inhale, feel the expansion. Exhale, release. Inhale. And release. And 
Coulisse. Inhale. Release. Three more times. Inhale. And release. And inhale. And release. So I started today's session to tell you a little bit about this key element, which is observation. And then I switched over to just show you some practical exercises, which are preparatory exercises to get your body warm and to start uh, to use, for example, all the different methods like the Qigong exercises that you know already or that you can find all for free on the online platform. But what is actually now the point in having these type of exercises and on the other side having the series about the observation? If you don't know where a problem is located, or if you don't know from what a problem is arising, if you don't know what actually are all the aspects, why I'm feeling limited and why I'm feeling restricted, you cannot change these things. The Buddhist teaching, the Shaolin teaching, everything I'm trying to share is simply that many, many answers that you are looking for, they are not going to come because you think about them. They come because you are able to see the answer by yourself. Because your ability of observing the structures, of observing how things are interrelated, becomes skillful. Now when we talk about emotional states that you maybe want to change about you, or if you have any type of other issues and thoughts that are a burden for yourself, then we are talking about an area which is very, very fine still. Finding the root of our emotions is a very fine aspect. Finding the root of our thoughts is also a very, very fine aspect. And this is the moment where we are using our body, our physical body, to start and recreate and start to get to know ourselves based on our body first. When you start your first Shaolin training, no matter how deep the exercise is, it's not about the depths of the exercise. It is about your ability, how deep your mind is able to penetrate into your own body. From the outside, exercises, movements, different routines, they may be all look the same. But somebody who has practiced for a long time 
or even you when you are practicing these things for a long time. Your perception and what you are actually realizing and what you are able to detect inside of yourself has a quite different level than when you just started as a beginner. So after figuring out now that observation is quite important, how do you train it? How is it possible to increase your ability to, uh, to observe yourself better? It's a very simple way, which means repetition. Repetition is key in so many different aspects in the Shaolin arts. Yeah? Repetition is the mother of skill. There is nothing that comes just from one day to another. It's the repetition of the exercises, not changing the exercises, staying with one and the same routine for quite some time. But while you are practicing, try to avoid any type of distraction. You must become the object of observation. You do the exercises and watch yourself, watch inside of yourself. It's not a good exercise and it's not a bad exercise. But when you are making the exercise, something is happening. And this is for you to find out what is actually happening inside of me. While you continue along this path, I would also suggest that don't take too quick conclusions. In the last three decades of practicing many different methods and many different arts, there were always points when I thought, ah, okay, now I understand it. Now I have it. But after some time passed by, I realized again, that was just the beginning. It has been something very normal in today's world, in today's life, that you grow up and spend a lot of time caring about all different types of things that are located outside of you. We are attracted to things that lie outside of us. And this is the reason why we likely spend also a lot of our attention on things that lie on the outside. But I strongly think, I strongly believe that there is much, much more to discover and that there is so much more potential that is lying inside of us. But we just need to get our attention right again. To look at our life and figure out what type of actions and what type of thoughts brings benefit to myself and to others. And what type of behavior, what type of habit, and what type of thoughts is harmful for me and is harmful for others. When you get these two answers clear for yourself, then it's from there on an easy commitment. You repeat the things that bring benefit to yourself and to this world. And you try to avoid and abandon the things that are harmful for yourself and that are harmful for others. 
Now, I think since we have this time together now, um, let's have a five minute break. And in between, I will tell our team here to turn on the chat again. And so you can ask and drop some questions that you might want to ask just to our, to our co-host and we're going to answer it afterwards then. See you in a few minutes. Okay, so I just talked with um, with the office in our monastery, and I see that so many questions um, were asked in the chat. So in case I cannot pick up on all of your questions, I'm sorry for that, but all the answers and about the breathing techniques, about the different purposes of the Qigong and on what you should pay attention to when you are making the exercises. Somewhere on the channel uh, where you can see all the videos, I think I covered as much as I could already. So in case you haven't seen the videos, feel free to do so. And even if you saw the videos two or three times already, watch them once in a while again. Because what I know, I put inside those videos. Yes. So let's start and see what type of questions you are still having. Hello. Yeah, oh, Shuja. Okay. First question. How much Qigong each day would you recommend to practice if you have a job and family and at what times of the day would it be the best? Okay. When you realize that something is good for you, I think it will happen very, very automatically that you want to have more from it. So that means if you dedicate very, very little time for a practice, then it also means that the result of your practice is also going to be very, very little. So the more you practice, the more results you can expect, the more results you're going to have. Now, if you have a job, if you have different obligations, my suggestion would be wake up one hour earlier every morning. Try not to, uh, to add, for example, the Qigong practice after your walk in the evening when you're coming home. Because even if you make the plan that at 6 p.m., you come home from work and then you take that one hour for yourself, the chances are very, very high that there will happen different incidents. People will call you. Somebody is going to want something from you. So it's just going to distract you. And therefore, wake up one hour earlier in the morning when everybody is still uh, sleeping. Because in that time, Nobody's going to call you on the phone. Nobody's going to send you an email. And therefore, I think in the morning is the best time uh, to practice. Does it matter if you're breathing from the stomach or chest? If yes, what's the difference? So. 
qigong or these practices have so-called three pillars one of them is the physical movement one of them is the breathing method or the breathing techniques or the way how you breathe and the third one is what your intention what your will or your your mind is doing during all these exercises now if we take the breathing if until today let's say you have never really paid attention what actually is happening when i am inhaling what is happening when i'm exhaling every breath there is a sensation something is happening let's take for an example you inhale and you would say i feel that on the tip of my nose between the nostrils the air is flowing in and when you exhale you feel that from here you feel the sensation in front of the nose how it leaves your nose again another person he will say i'm breathing in and i can feel how my chest starts to expand and when i exhale how the chest starts to contract again when you become very very fine and when you spend a lot of time with these different breathing methods then you will maybe realize that the breath is not just limited to your lungs not just limited to your chest but it's a question of how much are you repeating the same technique over and over again how much are you observing yourself while you are breathing how many distraction do you have while you are making the exercises the more you stay with one thing and clearly observe it time always time over and over again the more deep your understanding of the breath or of this or of these methods uh, will become and therefore it probably is not the right question if you should use chest breathing or if you should use abdominal breathing in the moment you dive into the area of what is the purpose of the breath then you know how to adjust then you know how to um, how to direct yourself yes i hope it answers uh, your question if not now one day it will be answered what is the purpose of the clenched fists right now my fist or my hand is just uh, relaxed soft in the moment i start to clench it not just something is happening in the fist but something about the whole body is working it's not just the fist that now suddenly starts to tense up there is something which is increased something is increasing often times we talk about balance it's about balance it's about the ability to create balance now first of all it's very pointless to talk about balance it's because imagine you you have a child or you are trying to explain to your child how to ride the bicycle you can tell him that in order to ride the bicycle you need to have a feeling for balance 
So 50% of your body weight must be on the left side, 50% of your body weight must be on the right side. 50% in the front and 50% in the back. It doesn't matter how much words you are using. As long as this person does not feel the balance, experience the balance, it's pointless to use the words. So the approach therefore is, if we want to create balance in our life, we need to be able and see what are the aspects that we want or that we need to balance out. So when somebody is seeing the Qigong exercise in the beginning, he might say, okay, they look like very relaxing exercises. But if somebody, let's assume, is already weak or doesn't have too much energy, doesn't have too much power, doesn't have too much vitality, the chances are very high that more relaxation exercises or practicing soft qigong or practicing this type of releasing qigong is the wrong method for this person. Somebody who carries already too much tension inside of himself, it probably is not the, a good idea to use more methods that are increasing the power, that increasing the energy. The balance is about balancing out your energy input and your energy output. If on a daily basis, you are already wasting too much energy outwards, then we need to find methods how to increase it. If you are already keeping too much energy locked inside of yourself, blocked inside of yourself, things are stagnating inside of yourself, you need to find ways and methods to release, yeah? And if you look at the eight exercises of the, of the Bad Wan Jin, normally the exercise number seven, clenching the fists, and gazing angry. Every time a person gets angry, you just observe what is happening. If you are angry, you are able to pull out trees. You are able to destroy because angriness, rage, is creating a very, very powerful energy. But when this energy comes from emotion, it is uncontrolled. It's uncontrolled. Nevertheless, we know that angriness or the signals of angriness are raising this very specific type of energy. And so by imitating what is happening when we get angry, you clench the teeth your eyes start to focus. And this is the moment where you clench the fists. This is to put you in another, in another state. And yes, this is the purpose of the clenching the fists, to access a different source of energy. If I'm new to the practice of Qigong, with which style or routine do you recommend me to start? Um, before you do nothing, it's better to really start any type of Qigong practice. Yeah, at this moment, if you because of all the restrictions, it might not be so easy to uh, just go and visit some teacher or instructor. So therefore feel free to just uh, to look 
for all the different type of online trainings that you find and just copy at the moment. But once it's possible again, I think it is really, really important that you find someone that you trust and also someone who is able to guide you at least in the beginning to guide you to look over you and give you small corrections yeah? because ultimately i think replacing a personal um, teacher uh, is not so easy yeah but just choose any type of qigong that you like maybe by experience but especially after practicing it for a while that gives you benefit that gives you what you are looking for in this life give you more peace give you more energy give you more strength qigong is the ability is the skill to deal with the life forces it doesn't matter how you express it what are we going to do with all the life force that we have hopefully you're going to make yourself become healthy have a healthy mind have a healthy and strong body your mind is healthy your body is healthy now you help people in your closest surrounding that they also get healthy it's life quality that we want to increase you're good in qigong you are able and have the skill to deal with the life forces well then hopefully do something good about it increase your life increase the life of other people Do you visualize anything within the body while you do the exercises? I did in the past. I don't do it anymore. You can use visualization to, let's say, to trick the mind in the beginning. But in today's talk, I shared with you the importance of observation. Observation is not about how something should be. It's not about creating something additionally that is not there. And if you keep this in mind, it's not a problem to use visualization during the practice. But the purpose or the goal to aim for is the mind is clear and you simply realize what is going on. You don't need to visualize something is moving. It moves. You don't need to visualize how an area of your body starts to fill up starts to expand it's happening yes how to stay focused during the exercise mm -hmm. we humans become good in everything that we are doing often. You want to increase your ability to focus, you need to learn to focus more. That means take a small candle, place it on the table, light it on, and just force yourself, practice the mind, practice your will, to look at this candle and don't get distracted by anything else around it. At the same time, these are simple things. Focus also means you can tell yourself, 
for the next two hours. I'm not going to watch on my mobile phone. That's it. Put something on the mind and stick to it. This is the simple way how to practice focus. Is balance a feeling? If so, how does it feel to be balanced? Does it feel like there's a certain energy around oneself, always there, always steady? Or is it an emotion one has yet to discover? How is it like to live a balanced life? in the recent months or let's say years i think the global situation brought many people out of balance because things they seem to be unstable there there was so much uncertainty or there is so much uncertainty because what we realize is this life is about ups and it is about downs. Sometimes you get things, sometimes you lose things. The problem is you don't know when. We don't know when the restrictions will be removed again. And we also don't know when the next sickness is gonna come to this earth. So therefore, when I observe this, when you see this, it is not good, it is not beneficial or useful to relate the state of how you feel to all these external circumstances. Your government takes some type of decisions and measurements and you feel impacted by it. There are many different things. It can be a relationship. Every time you are placing your state of being, your state of feeling, in the moment you are outsourcing it to something else which is not in your hands, then your life is not in your hands. Balance is, harmony is, when you discover something about yourself, which is stable at all times, it is there when you wake up, it is there when you go to bed. It is there if this world has COVID, it is there if this world does not have COVID. There is something stable about you. Something remains the same. If you have money, if you don't have money, something is the same. And that means it feels like you're unshakable. It feels like you found your place. You cannot be disturbed. And I personally think that is something really, really great. Not just to practice it, but to also share this idea, share this concept until these ideas and concepts become reality. It's very easy to talk about these things. But harmony is ultimate. Do we need to lock the knees when we stretch up? Try to lock nothing. Don't lock anything while you are making the exercises, unless there is the purpose of locking something. 
but especially in the qigong when you want that's when you want to nourish the complete body when you want to increase the circulation inside of yourself it's important to not lock anything if you lock the door well then fresh air and used air cannot exchange anymore there's no circulation happening anymore so that's why we have exercises which are called opening exercises releasing exercises releasing exercises means you are detecting you are observing the stagnation inside of yourself and because you observe them because you know where they are located now you use the proper methods like the breathing methods to release the tension to release the blockage until your complete body is open yeah, is open and uh, yeah when it's open there are more things you can do with it How can I understand that when something changes in my body, something changes in my mind, and when something changes in my mind, something changes in my body? <laughs> okay. I really would not like to go in too much philosophy or in too much uh, conceptual thinking on this question. But there is a simple sentence uh, that we are sometimes using in order to understand or learn a little bit more about um, ourselves. And this saying goes, where the heart is, there is the mind. Where the mind is, there is the energy. Yeah. Where the energy is, there is the power. Now, you need to be able and see your own thoughts. The thoughts is the basis of habit. Habit is the basis of your character. And character, this is who you are going to become. This is where you are going. So you need to watch your habits. You need to see who am I? And all of this ultimately starts with the simplest and finest thoughts that arise in ourselves every day. And I can only say that there is a very strong relationship between what you think and what you experience in your lifetime yes how can i improve my posture using qigong i catch myself having a hollow back okay the first step is already established which means you can see the mistake that's good. And now you need the right methods. And applying right methods, correcting something, means you need to remove everything that led to this wrong posture and increase or integrate new methods into your daily life that are now starting to correct this posture again 
one of them is always try exercise the flexibility of your spine keep the spine flexible and how you know this for example is that there are four basic movements that your spine must be able to to do yes so number one is you have left torsion second one is right torsion the third one is when you are bending backwards and the next one is bending to the front so to keep your spine flexible torsion to the left torsion to the right stretching backwards bending to the front these are the four basic exercises and and basic directions how you can watch yourself and how flexible you still are so try to keep the flexibility in those four dimensions so and additionally always watch that the top of the head is erect so when you are sitting for example try to stand and sit straight uh, try to avoid sitting too much like this especially when you are uh, working with the pc or if you have some office work from time to time create balance if you feel too much you're leaning to the front correct it and important is to make all of these things on a regular basis not one day too much of it regularly every day pay attention to it tell yourself i want to correct my posture and i will pay attention to every action that i'm doing in order to achieve it and then stick to your word Maybe last question. Um, yes. During static posture, should we generate strength and tension or keep our body relaxed? It depends what you want to achieve. But if you look at the videos that I published before, The more your range, the more your bandwidth becomes between the ability of tensing up and on the other side, the ability of releasing. The bigger it is in between here, the more energy you can create. So that means synchronizing, breathing, and movement synchronizing and integrating strength and softness integrating expansion and contraction it all must be in there this life is not just about one side this life includes everything and this is why the qigong the skill the practice to deal with your life energies with your own energies also must consist of strength and hardness and softness on the other side so yes static posture increase the strength and release afterwards and always switch this is one way how to practice. Yes. So, okay. We have uh, slowly come, um, come to an end now. For everyone who somehow uh, wasn't able to attend today's session, 
I will most probably have um, have a recording that I will share with you later on. And maybe just for the moment, hold on, I will be right back. So looking forward to see you soon again. And right now, let's just say, wishing you all the best from the Shaolin Temple. No, come on in guys. Come closer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>